Due to the graphic nature of this program, listener discretion is advised. There's no limits to this in my city's city. Now we're always smoking bombs like it's 420. We get high as though we're hot and soft, fast, play stars. And it's hosted by Tim Vicious, Side the Fudge. Welcome to Big Downloading episode 170 of Suplex City Limits for July 14th, 2018. Cooler than Freddie Jackson, sipping a milkshake in a snowstorm. It's your boy, the King of Bong style, Jim Vicious, and his kush got purple hair like a hood rat. My co-host. Your local hood rat. Your local cunty poo. Tyler Fudge. Hey. <laughs> Uh, Suplex City Limits available for listening where fine podcasts are found. You can follow me on the show Twitter at Suplex City Limit. Follow Tyler at The Federation. If you like the show, consider picking up a t-shirt at Pro Wrestling Tees. Uh, we had actually sold a t-shirt. I oh. want to give a shout out to the person whose information I have somewhere. <laughs> that I've failed Seven and a half star. <laughs> Meltzer rated podcast. We are. We, are. Uh, we, we will win the Meltzer Award when they make one. Tony, Tony, in, yeah, he is in uh, United Kingdom. I have no idea what this is. is. That, I don't want to is fuck up the, your sin. The tone is, is it a V starts with a V. Uh, no, no. Oh, okay. Maybe it's not the same Tony I was thinking of. Yeah, there's New, one, there's there's one Tony like, that that we interact with a lot on Twitter. Mercy side, United Kingdom. I don't know. I don't know where you're at, Tony. But we thank you for picking up a pro uh, fucking shirt at Pro Wrestling Tees. We do. You, you, sir, are a fine gentleman. You are not yeah. Conti Poo. <laughs> it's gonna be like it's gonna be your new thing. It is gonna be my new thing. I'm not gonna name yeah. names, but Conti Poo. Yeah, you're listening you're losing us listeners on Twitter. Uh you know, I mean we could we could we could we're okay with losing people like him. <laughs> Yeah, I don't care. Uh, or you can donate on our Patreon. It's a little a dollar a month for the Brooklyn Brawler tier. Uh, a little bit more than that, you can become a producer, help bring the show to the masses, get a shout-out at the top, like our friends at the Mizcast, Casey, the infamous Chris Savage, uh, Caleb Morganfield, B-Rad Brad, kick-ass Keith Martin, uh, maniac Michael Thomas, the Riceroni Jabroni, Tyloni, Insane Ian Jackson, Jumpin' Jeremy Fultz, and our boys over at the Wrestling Soup Podcast. Much love to Mish, Joe, and Draper over there. This week on Suplexity Lemons, the what the pot smokers wrestling pod on the internet. Cunty poo of the immorals. <laughs> yes. We're going to be recapping the G1 special. We got the news, the top three. We'll be previewing Extreme Rules. Uh, we got all kinds of shit. Impact, NXT, Lucha Underground. So much. So much stuff. So much stuff. All for you coming up now. Let's get into it with the news. Oh, maybe this time it'll work. Ooh, this week in the news. Mysterio to appear in New Japan. And Coach... Takes all the credit for Fox. Over to you, Jim. I'm Jim Vicious, and this is news to you. Let's talk about the Ring of Honor and New Japan show. Yes, at Madison Square Garden, which yeah. you got to thank God that this is actually happening. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yeah. somebody finally put the WWE in its place. And it mm -hmm. took the big bully of Sinclair to do it. And more yeah. obvious, Sinclair, I love you for it. Yeah, uh, Sinclair sucks for the most part, yes. though. Um, but no less, yeah, the first time anyone's run pro wrestling in this building for at this current years. location. Yeah. It's crazy. Very fucking cool. Um, it's on a Saturday. It'll be going against TakeOver right the day before WrestleMania. 
What do you, what do you think, man? How are they going to do? I I well, I mean, it all depends really on how they market this card. You've got a New Japan ROH co-branded show. Hopefully, it's not just an ROH show with New Japan wrestlers. Um, uh, I have and hopefully, it's not though, just like ROH versus and New Japan guys no, all the way through. No, I want one see, side of that is not equal to the other. It's not. It's not. It's like oh, you're going to put Punch Martinez against Minoru Suzuki. <laughs> Fuck. You know what I mean? But like if you got you know, you've got these guys, you've got Okada, you've got Kashida, you got Omega, you got all this slew of guys, you can make the most banging card that NXT cannot even come close to touching. Because let's you don't wanna, it, you're, are you telling me you don't want to see the dogs take on Rapungi three K, dude? <laughs> <laughs> No, not even close. <laughs> I would like or to coast see. to coast to coast to take on Evil and Sonata. If coast to coast is on that show, it's a fail. First off, <laughs> what are you doing trying to fucking sell your MSG co- <laughs> card with coast to coast on it? That's just no. coast to coast. Fuck. Send those what, fuckers what back this? to the power plant where what they is came this from. Morning AM radio. Fuck <laughs> coast to coast. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. If they headline it with a big New Japan match, you know, yeah. maybe. Even it'll be interesting. You can, sh- you can shoehorn it too and have the Young Bucks in the main event, and therefore it's not even just a New Japan main event. It's an ROH main event as well because there's so many guys that are shared between the two. You know what I mean? You can you can do whatever you want, and it could be a great show. But please don't yeah. have it as you know, like we got eight ROH title matches, and then. A never open title defense. Holy nah. shit. You know, like, yeah. that's not what I want to see. But if, if they do it right, I do feel that they can not only outsell NXT TakeOver, but just yeah. be an all around better show. Because ta- I mean, TakeOver are uh, notorious yeah. for being the best show of the weekend. Yeah. I mean, you got to have the, the heavyweight belt, uh, oh, yeah. whether that's. Whether that's Okada or Omega or whoever the fuck. I mean, yeah. I don't know who else you'd put it on. Uh, that needs to be in there for sure. A big title defense against like a different type of opponent. Yeah. Could really be something, man. I'm fucking stoked for it. Yeah. Anything that like fires back on WWE is a good thing for us. Yes. Cause we all know how much we hate the WWE. <laughs> I mean, we do and we don't, right? Well, we pretty much do. Um, <laughs> more on that later. We pretty much will do. Yes. That's correct. Uh, Jay Lethal, of course, denies the allegations against him. As you would, <laughs> as you, as you would. It's like, yeah, no, that she's right. I, I did totally did that. <laughs> <laughs> Taylor Hendricks blocked me on uh, on the Twitter as well because she's a conti poo. Yeah, <laughs> she's going to be like a counter for that. Um, but yeah, she posted some pictures of text messages, which didn't say anything. All I said is like, that doesn't say anything. And she blocked me for that. And it's completely true. And, and, you know, and I'm sure that the reason why she blocked you, or this is me being, um, trying to be level headed, right? Well, uh, the description sure. for our newest episode says something about like us taking the piss out of her. So <laughs> didn't it? No, it didn't. No, oh, I, mean, I don't know. You wrote it. Remember, I didn't write this one. I just copied and pasted. No, uh, I didn't. Yeah. But you look at it, you know, she, I'm sure that she was getting bombarded with those things. You yeah. know what I mean? So, like, like we were talking about earlier, it's just easier. This wasn't on the show, but we were talking about it earlier. It's just easier just to delete it from your life kind of deal. And now yeah. that's just me trying to see the good in people, but I've never heard good things about her. So yeah. Yeah. she's probably just a, a bitch. Yeah. <laughs> uh, here it is there it is uh we got some announcements for the may young classic do you care first off do you care about the may young classic um once the the card gets fully developed and we see who is going to be in the tournament i i mm. hope that i will be more into it but I don't know well, hopefully who they any of these girls do it are. fucking right this time. Yeah. You know, but last time they, they dropped it in these big fucking blocks. It's like, how am I supposed to sit and watch like four hours of this at one time? Yeah, I don't know. I agree. You got to do something else with that shit. Even if, okay, so let's, let's mold two stories together in one. Okay. Um, WWE, you're talking about doing a women's show in the fall. What if they, you know, that like you build this tournament week by week, the finals are on that show. You know what I mean? It just makes sense instead of yeah. just here's fucking four episodes this week and then two weeks later four more episodes and then in a month 
they'll have the finals live. It just doesn't. I don't. You know, yeah. it just doesn't. Well, make sense. to clarify too. When you're talking about that, you said women's show. It's like a woman's pay per view, not like a separate show. But yes. yeah, I don't. Yeah, you, yeah. yeah. Uh, Impact just did that. Like last week, they had like a rise of the knockouts thing. I don't know if it was a new thing or if it was like I don't know. But they've I done, saw it floating. They've done those one night only shows. They're just just knockouts. So like this is not some yeah. new thing that the WWE have stumbled upon. You know. Yeah. <laughs> Get ready for the fucking low ass ratings. Oh yeah, no one's gonna watch that shit. I'm not gonna watch that. You know what? (laughs) Let me let me get back and say it depends again on what they do with it. If you have women like Kyrie Sane, Io Shirai, Tony Storm, all these girls that can work their fucking ass off, it's gonna be okay. It'll be good. Especially Kyrie Sane, she's cute as a fucking button. That talking segment she did on NXT a couple weeks ago, goddamn, I almost want to beat off right there. But anyways, <laughs> uh, if you if you go about it that way, it can be a very good show. But if you're gonna have, you know, let's put the Sasha Bailey feud on there, it's gonna die a horrible death. Oh yeah, maybe we could have some Liv Morgan matches, or at, at yeah. least Liv Morgan's cute. <laughs> yeah, she also looks like a fucking little girl. I mean, like she's not intimidating whatsoever to no. me. I wouldn't even have chicks like that in my, you know. I and there's agree. other small girls. Sasha's a small girl, but at least she looks like she looks like something. she'll tear your face off because she's a bitch. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, it looks like she'll snap her fingers and wag them and then fucking slap you. But yeah, some of the uh, announcements to it. Uh, Casey Catanzaro, who is the American Ninja Warrior star. I use that term loosely. Yes. She, re- she recently signed with the WWE. So what? She was on this show. She recently signed. She does jack shit about wrestling, probably. Oh, without a doubt. She just knows how to run through obstacles. Progress women's champion Ginny. Of course, as you mentioned, Io Shirai, who can you have... Another Japanese woman win it? I feel like you should. I mean, if anyone should win, it should be her. She should win this thing. Yeah, I mean, look at the story you can tell, too. Like, let's say Kari Sane won it last year. If she wins it this oh, yeah. year, then you've got a bona fide. this is a Japanese core that are just killing everybody. And then, Jim, then you can do your Yakuza gimmick. The Yakuza gimmick. <laughs> or... Um, I think we talked about a really. I think we pitched a really great Io Shirai and uh, Kyrie Sane fucking angle too, where she comes in and you know Sane got her spot. She was supposed to come in, yeah. but she didn't get cleared. And she's the fucking best wrestler, women's wrestler in Japan. And now she's come for her spot. You know, and yeah, yeah, her winning that tournament would be perfect. Yeah. Of course, yeah, but we won't get. We won't get. <laughs> probably not. No, you probably won't see the two of them in the finals. But you know, I think it would be realistic to see them both in like a a semifinals, maybe, and have you well, go think, over. I don't think Sane will even be in the thing. No, I, I don't know. I no, don't know what the plan is. They've so. only released four names yet, right? And they're horrible names aside from Yoshirai because I've never heard Nicole of Nicole Matthews, who's a twelve year vet. I keep on hearing that easy. name, but I have no idea who she is. It's just a generic fucking chick name. That's true, I, might have a, I might have fucking dated a girl named Nicole Matthews. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at it now, and there's nothing familiar about her whatsoever. And yeah, former WWE star Caitlin. So so I don't get that. I mean, yeah. I suppose if you want another WWE wrestler, you can just Google and see every inch of their body. Cool. Oh, but, is she naked? Oh, dude, I'll send you a picture right now. Yeah, please do. <laughs> just great. keep on going. <laughs> um, Brock Lesnar reappears in UFC to do a pro wrestling angle. More pro wrestling than pro wrestling. <laughs> when he gets in the ring and shoves Daniel Cormier, says motherfucker, breaks a $20,000 lens. Yeah. This fight uh, is six months away because he just got into the testing pool in early July, so... It just the only one reason to talk, I guess, is Lesnar. But also, it's just more pro wrestling than pro wrestling. Very much so. It, yeah. They're doing pro wrestling so much better. I sent you a link in the Skype. <laughs> oh, yeah. So now, well, if WWE is not going to do pro wrestling, I mean, you fucking might as well, you know. Oh, let's yes. see here. The Fappening Blog. I love the Fappening Blog. I do, too. I do too. I think it's a great website. <laughs> I'm glad That's somebody great. else goes to it besides for me. <laughs> Caitlin. Oh, yeah, this broad. Okay. Yeah. She, I think I did see some of these before. She's muscly as fuck with great big fake tits. Oh, yeah. 
Those are huge fucking thing. How are you going to wrestle with those? I'm right. Exactly. That's what I was saying on our episode that did not take <laughs> last night. <laughs> that you only know, how do you oh, wrestle yeah. with those bazingas? <laughs> With bazingas. <laughs> uh, fuck. That's pretty good stuff right there. Uh, I don't know, dude. The UFC is shitty these days, but this got all the uh, MMA fucking marks. Like, they didn't even know they were being worked. It was cute. Fuck pro wrestling. This is going to be awesome. Yeah, <laughs> like, like, yeah, yeah is, is it really? It is pro these wrestling, guys. bro. Like, you're looking at Brock Lesnar. Who is a pro wrestler? I don't. That's that's what he is. He's a, more of a pro wrestler than anything else. And then yeah. you've got Daniel Cormier, who is a fucking pro wrestling mark. He loves mm-hmm. it. Loves mm-hmm. pro wrestling. So this this is just some brainchild between two people. It's just like let's do pro wrestling better than Conor McGregor. Let's do pro wrestling better than fucking uh, what's his name? Fucking Chael Sonnen. And let's do pro wrestling better than WWE. And they did. I mean, if it gets you, you know, if it gets you more pay per view buys and more money, more, you know, fucking good on you. Yeah, I, I would imagine they get a good buy rate for it. They got up until like what February to to. Yeah, my to point is, you know, MMA marks who like to talk shit on wrestling, but think that oh, these guys fucking don't like each other. This is gonna be awesome. Yeah, okay, but yeah. you're being worked. Yeah, you are. You are. Because uh, nobody comes into a David an Arquette. Oct- octagon, pushes people oh. around, and have the owner laugh. You know what I mean? Like, this is not yeah, a fight. It's... You're not supposed to push people around. Your owner is a piece of shit if that's actually what he's doing. And you know <laughs> yeah. what, man? There's all those stories about him and Ronda Rousey and then Schwab being an uh, Eskimo brother. Oh, so. yeah. <laughs> right. Do you remember when, uh, you probably, maybe you don't, but Nick Diaz got in the cage and started a fucking brawl with, uh, with Jake Shields fucking corner. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> that was a fucking shoot, man, because the yeah. Diaz's are fucking crazy. Or McGregor jumping the barricade at uh what was it? Fucking Bellator? Oh. Yeah, right. <laughs> that's not that's that's a, that's a shoot. <laughs> I mean, he's just a crazy fuck, but all that shit's pro wrestling. Of course. You know, he were like, "Oh, you show up to an event, you're not booked on a press conference and you throw a fucking chair through a window of a bus." And all of a sudden it's pro wrestling. Pro- yeah, <laughs> it is. Yeah. It is pro wrestling. But WWE is not going to do it. I don't know. I don't even know what they're doing anymore. Like, it needs a different term than pro wrestling. I guess it is. It's sports, sports entertainment. entertainment. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's it's not either of those. I mean, I guess it's it's more sports, but it's definitely not very entertaining. Oh, that's that's an understatement, Jim. It's, uh, it's David it's been Arquette for years. will not go away. <laughs> he got into an altercation with uh, I don't even know who this guy is, RJ City. Yeah, no idea. He's wrestling this weekend, um, but whatever. It's like they started fucking pushing each other around and fighting on a on a red carpet somewhere. Oh, then so, that's not a work either, eh? <laughs> oh yeah. All right, exactly. <laughs> um, I just think it's funny. It's like, dude, David Arquette. He's like back in on fucking wrestling i guess i don't understand i like i get it more power to him for you know being like okay you guys i get a lot of shit for it before but this time i'm gonna come and i'm gonna actually do it it's gonna suck it's we all know because david arquette's so so tiny he barely has a muscle you know courtney cox took all of his muscles in the divorce <laughs> so he, <laughs> It's, it's yeah. one of those things where it's like good on you for trying to do something that you need, you feel like you need to do, but yeah. don't, don't, don't force me into watching it, please. She took all of his fucking ability to get jobs in Hollywood too. And, yeah. <laughs> she, she took all of his credibility. Just that's yeah. mine. That's mine. That's mine. And this isn't mine, but I'm gonna take it anyways. Yeah, I've been taking your career as well. <laughs> Um, so yeah, other than that, I mean, we because we can talk about Takahashi. We can talk about that probably when we get into the uh, the the G one special, G1 yeah. special. But yeah, as far as news, what else did you have in news? Um, you know, like we, I don't think I really have much more. You know, they announced it, uh, the the announcers for All In, and uh, the one big thing about it that I really like is Justin Roberts is going to be uh, announcing the show. And then Sean yeah. Mooney is somewhere in this show, and it's, I can't wait. <laughs> I hope he's doing backstage interviews. I do too. In front of the lockers, maybe in the control room. It's all good. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, find a control room. Yeah, to have yeah man. He just he's by himself all night. Like, they keep fucking, he's locked in the control room somewhere. That'd be amazing. And then get, like, 90s all-in graphics. 
You know, when you cut the Sean Mooney, it'd be fucking dope, dude. Yeah. I, that's the kind of stuff that I would do. But I'm, yeah. I'm a piece of shit, so. Yeah, what are you, you going to do? <laughs> what are you, uh, you going to do? <laughs> yeah, what are you, you know, what the fuck what are you going to do? Uh, someone was, like, trying to get you fired. Yeah, exactly. Cunty poo. Yeah. You said one thing, yeah, you said cunty poo, and this guy, like, <laughs> Messages me and he's like trying to get you fight. I, I don't mean it's like that's not a job anyway. No, it's, it's, more about, it's, it's a hobby. We gonna take my hobbies away, sir. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. It's like once a week I get to actually talk about pro wrestling with somebody. Yeah, it's like, you know, fuck you, man. You're not taking this from me. No, no, eat shit. <laughs> uh, from there, let's uh, let's get into the top three. Two Plex City Limits. Top three. Top three. Suplex top three matches of the week. Fuck, I exhale and a hit as I do it. Awesome. Oh, <sighs> what a fun time. What a fun top time. I love three this. of the week. Why'd you take us through it, buddy? Okay, top three to me. The top three, you know, guys, if you don't like New Japan, you're not going to like this top three. But, I mean, if you don't like New Japan, you're probably not listening to us anyways. Cause we came in we came in agreeing, as we usually end up doing, but we had the exact same top three. Yeah. So. And it's just like, Tyler, what's your top three? Well, my top three is this. It's, it was the exact same thing. So let's start off with uh, Jay White and Juice Robinson, which to me was such a great story to tell, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. especially where you had, you know, uh, What's his name? Jay White <laughs> coming in. Everybody does. Nobody likes Jay White. You know, we've been on this bandwagon where there's nothing to get behind him. He's just a baby, baby face, not even in the general term, in a Freddy Krueger gimmick almost. And it's, it's it's not cool. Like he's got that weird Heath Ledger Joker without having any of Heath Ledger's charisma. Um, you know, all this stuff. But he comes in, uh. the crowd boos, and he plays towards it, giving him the finger, damn near killing Jim Ross, you know, all this stuff. And he's become <laughs> an ultra heel in, 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 in all of this. And Josh Barnett, I can't wait to see Jay White versus Josh Barnett. Can't fucking I hope wait. that happens. I, I hope too. that does happen. I do too. It probably because, won't, but I hope No, but Josh Barnett was in New Japan before, so I can't see why not. Yeah, I'd be all for that. Like, um, seriously, though, having Josh Barnett just look quietly into the mic and just say, you done fucked up now. <laughs> just like, I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. Pretty awesome, man. That whole thing was unplanned and was awesome. Anyway, I mean, I was obviously, you know, we hope the best Jim Ross is uh, recovering, and it's stupid that he got hurt and all that shit. Yes. But that said, it fucking added to it. It was like, holy shit, what's going on now? You know, like, it really... It really did. But yeah, Jay White, it's not him being a good heel. He just, I, I fucking hate him too. I don't like him. I think he's, uh, he just does nothing for me. And him in that gimmick makes no sense to me. Yeah, I, w- I would like to see the gimmick stripped away a little bit and him just become an asshole. Why is this guy he can be like, an asshole? Why is this guy getting the push he's getting? I don't understand it. Well, they invested a lot of time and money into him. You know, they sent him to the States to work for ROH. They do all the visas and shit like that. So, of course, they want to see if they can get some kind of return. But it's just been pushed so hard. Like, when you look at two side-by-side, Juice Robinson and Jay White, there's one, Jay White's a better wrestler, yes. But as an overall character and and persona, Juice Robinson is one of my favorite guys in the world. Like, what he was wearing that night, that, like, American colonial outfit, was so yeah. fucking cool, and then the glasses it was just like old school meets new school, and it was just so fucking cool. Yeah, and they they, they put the belt on yeah. Robinson, which I think is like, dude, White was doing jack shit with it, so might as well. And you finally have an American with the U.S. title, so yeah, all right, finally. Um, I like it. I think it's a good move. So let you see what he can do with it. I think he'll do fucking well with it. I think so too. I think it's going to be a, a good time. Um, Juice Robinson's a great promo. You know, we've seen that in in the last few weeks leading up to this yeah. feud, um, and, and it's a lot of that just comes down to there's no reins on him, so none of them Roman reins on him. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Our next match uh, would be Omega. That is Kenny Omega uh, defending the IWGP title against uh, Cody. Uh, 
which first off it starts with the entrances. Cody's entrance was great. Having all the <laughs> I'm assuming those are the new Japan Dojo guys that carried wow, him that to the ring. Who's that giant fucking black dude in the front? Oh, it's Dozovich's brother from another mother. That's what that is. Oh fuck, he's a big motherfucker. <laughs> Yeah, that got, dude's gonna be wrestling. Fuck yeah, I'm all for that. Yeah, man, fucking give make give him a Bob Sap fucking gimmick. Just kick ass. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, that Bob match Sapp. was so you know, it had its crazy spots. You know, the the power bomb onto the table was a little unnecessary, if you ask me. Oh, uh, dude, yeah, over the top on the table. That was incense, man. Yeah, so like. The match itself, though, I thought this was head over heels better than their match at Supercard of Honor because I mm-hmm. wasn't a fan of that match at all. And there was so much smoke and mirrors in that match as well because of the whole Cody being a heel character. But they brought it more, brought it back a little bit more on this one, and it was just more of a fight. And I mean, kind of, except for the fact that there's like ladders in the ring. It's like oh, yeah, anything that's went. True. That's true. Like, I don't why didn't like you that. just make? this a fucking no dq match or something why why are we I, I don't understand to me like you lose me in the logic of that where like these guys just let anything go it's, and it's That's not true. like lucha either like lucha underground it's well established that yeah you pretty much do whatever the fuck you want yeah. you know yeah there's nothing stopping you but here in new japan it i agree that it really takes away from the match but again like, people give me shit for saying this but that's cody rhodes Cody Rhodes is not that good of a wrestler to have this classic mat wrestling or, or work style match. Cody Rhodes, though, will get the guys talking by just doing this shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, and uh, more power to him. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's just crazy. That superplex off a ladder is fucking absurd. Yeah. At least it wasn't the way they were teasing it the first time. Well, somebody would have died. That's not going to happen. No, no, no no one's going to do shit like that. But uh, in the post match of this, we might as well talk about it since we're here. Um, Everyone poses up on the ramp and then the Tongans Tongans fuck everybody up. Yep. I've seen a lot of a lot of um, not hatred towards it, but like. uh, I've seen a lot of people talking about how, you know, like, why would you have the Tongans do this and it's like well I mean story Dude, I fucking makes don't sense. It. yeah me, me yeah. too like I've seen it, it's like yeah. people just no I don't care about this and it's like you don't care about this because you're not involved in the story you're not you're not you're not entrenched into the story you're just watching as a bystander I watch New Japan every now and then that's what that is if but you know that these Tongans been in they're the oldest guys in bullet club they've been there for the longest tana yeah. tonga has been a guy that's been overlooked in the bullet club for years even though he can work so well so fucking yeah. well and he's such a good looking dude like we talked about this last week he could be roman reigns better than roman reigns could mm. and, and it's just dude i, I feel it's great i didn't need anyone to tell me this story you know what i'm saying no. and and you know, you'd not let you had that anyway because you had Jim Ross and, and Barnett on commentary, and they weren't telling uh, you any kind of fucking story. No, but I didn't need any story to realize. Yeah, these guys are—they're OG, they're overlooked, they're like a fucking afterthought in the Bullet Club at this yep. point. It's fucking awesome, and now you've got a group of badass tongues. I imagine Fale will end up joining up with them. I would imagine he's an honor. He has a shirt that says Honorary Tongan that Chase Owens threw away in being the elite. So I would imagine he's part of it. There you go. Yeah, and they have the uh, they have new shirts on and shit. Yeah, the firing uh, squad, or is it firing squad? Yeah. Yeah, firing squad. I think it's awesome. I think yeah. it's cool. Uh, they needed they needed to do something. Yes. Those guys are the perfect guys to break off because they're just fucking B team. Yeah. And to me, exactly, you shouldn't even have B team guys. You know, that's what makes a uh, a group cool is if there are no B team guys. That's what ruined the NWO was putting everybody yeah. in, and this was what that's what the Bull Club had become really is like you've got everybody yeah. in it but do you notice that in all this bullet club bullshit there's one bullet club member that we haven't seen for weeks and weeks and weeks who's that uh you drove talk or you drove what's his fucking name oh my god was I, he, lost it. I thought he was here i thought he came down ran down and got fucked up Sorry, not uh no uh, uh bone soldier what's his name oh haven't Ishimori? seen him since, Ishimori, yeah. I haven't seen him since the the Super Juniors. Mm. 
You know oh, yeah, I mean? he did join. He did join Bullet Club, yeah. didn't he? Uh, yeah, so it was like, it's, mm-hmm. he never even got attacked. Mm-hmm. Is this because they want to have him with the Tongans? Or is, you know, is he going to be a player later on down the road? Or have they just right. didn't want to fly him in? Yeah, that was awesome too. You know, eventually, like Squirrel and Paige, they come out to try to save. They don't. Yeah. Um, eventually, Cody like shambles down. The Tongans give him a chair. He turns on him. It's fucking awesome. Gets his ass kicked for doing so. We're still good. Yeah. <laughs> how yeah. about how, how about uh who the fuck decided to have a fifty year old fat fucking dude pile drive your top star and champion onto a chair? What the yeah, fuck? I mean, I I don't know either. Uh, as nice as it was to see Haku in that opening match on the G1 special, yeah, it's it's you don't need to have him doing that. Um, I really hope that he's not a part of the firing squad and this was just a G1 special night and he was there for oh. that. He doesn't bring anything to the firing squad, and uh, I don't think New Japan is that stupid. I I, I really think that Haku was just there. You know, it's a feel good moment for Haku's sons to have a match with their father in America. I, maybe he won't be working, but I, I could, I wouldn't mind him on the, uh, being outside. I feel like that's what he'll be. He'll be with them. He'll be on the outside. I, I can live with that too. I just don't want him to be the focal point. Cause I've heard a lot of people talk about how, Oh, Haku's leading the firing squad. It's like, first off, oh, why God. do you think Haku is leading the firing squad? There's been nothing to even, even hint at this, you know, <laughs> like, but you know, yeah, and at the end too, it's like Cody helps up Kenny, and it's like as fucking cheesy as shit like this is that those guys do. Because you know, and I, I'll admit it, some of the shit, the Kenny Omega stuff, and the Bullet Club shit, you know, with like uh, the Buck, one of the Bucks, like you know, dooming himself to the One Wing Angel and shit. It's cheesy, but it's fucking good. I don't yes. even care. Cody, like, helping him up and shit, and them hugging. It's like, it's fucking great, man. Yeah. On Being the Elite, they share, they shared in and out chicken tenders, and that was the peace <laughs> offering. So, like, come on, man. It's yeah. so fucking good. I love this. And I really like, too, this is going back to Being the Elite, how Hangman Page now is just a psychopath because yeah. his alter ego that killed Joey Ryan has taken over. <laughs> <laughs> so like even did you even, see him at the g1 press conference he looked like a fucking like a oil tycoon <laughs> he looked like he came he looked like he shot jr yeah <laughs> he, he looked like an evil fucking oil tycoon from an 80s movie or With something a fucking he looks like necktie or that whatever the fuck that's called the string tie yeah fuck me a uh, bolo tie oh is that what that's called bolo tie okay I think that's his skull. I fucking love what it, man. The fuck, I've become yeah. a huge fan of Adam Page over the last couple months. Since the G1 special in yeah. Long Beach in Mar- March, I think, believe it was, I've become a really big fan of Adam Page. Yeah, I don't blame you there, man. Uh, and then the third match, Dragon Lee and uh, Takahashi. Yes, which, I mean, somebody pointed out on Twitter that I completely forgot that last week on the show, yours truly had said something bad. <laughs> going to happen in this match and oh well fuck it it's, ever <laughs> it's to be expected man yes. of course something bad's gonna happen yeah With these two guys together holy shit but like, it starts balls to the wall they hurt and run it to the floor is the first move before <laughs> even gets his jacket off so like it's fucking awesome though. it was and like i showed i showed my buddy that you know what i mean it's like dude just watch this and the match starts and he just did that and my buddy, he's just eyes were wide, mouth was open. It's like, holy fuck. Right? And just kept on going and going and going. I love shit like that, dude. Where, yeah. You know, you start a match like hot like that, where, you know, one guy runs out of the corner and throws like a fucking shotgun drop kick or something. It's like, ah, oh, I love it. I like, I like a match to fucking start like that, you know, rather yeah. than the, the bullshit. It's awesome. It's, it's, yeah, it's it really shows good. Urgency and, and it makes the match mean something because you know, this one guy here really wants to get above and ahead really fast because he needs to, because these two have matches all over the place. And if he doesn't want to die in this match, he needs to end it as quickly as possible. If he doesn't want to die in this match, he's going to fucking kill the other guy. <laughs> yeah. Which, you know, the, what was it called? The dragon, almost is. dragon suplex. Is that what it was? Or Phoenix, nah. Phoenix Suplex or Phoenix Driver or something. I don't know. But uh, obviously Whatever. he was supposed to keep his hands clenched and didn't. And, yeah, Takahashi went down first on the mat, skidded, and finished the match like a fucking champ. Well, there wasn't much left, luckily, but, yeah. No, but Jesus Christ, he did a Canadian Destroyer. 
<laughs> with a yeah, he did. damn near yeah. broken neck. He uh, he almost did the time bomb correctly, but you could tell where his neck was bad. He couldn't reach down and hook the head. But yeah. I mean, it's a shame. I don't know what they're going to do with that junior heavyweight title now. Well, we'll see. Hopefully, he's not that hurt. I've heard it. It's not going to require surgery. So I've that's heard that good. as well. And and he's already back in Japan, so he can't be hurt. That I would. They wouldn't let you fly with a freshly broken neck. I wouldn't think. I wouldn't want to. <sighs> Like, would you want to have to be up in the sky in turbulence with a broken neck? No. Yeah, I don't know. All the way to Japan is like a 16-hour flight. Can you imagine how stiff that neck would be? Yeah, it's it's interesting. So we'll see how long he's out. Um, I don't know. Do we, what is their protocol on shit like that? Would they fucking take it and put it on somebody else? Or, no, or you know. Well, like, I, I, I don't know. If- Say he's out for six months. What do they do? I, I don't have really know enough of like what they would do in that type of situation. It's because we never see this. Look at Tanahashi and how injured he was. He kept that intercontinental title and lost it like six months after getting injured. <laughs> right? We, it's just what, it's true. you know, it, 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 we, we've been lucky enough that the injuries that have happened serious in new Japan, like Hanma and Shibata, they weren't holding titles. Mm. So like, it's it's something that we haven't seen yet, and I or I'm sure it's happened. Of course, it's happened over like the 30, 40 years that New Japan's been around. But if you look at it in that way, you know, it, it, modern times we haven't seen it. I, I don't think it's something that's been prevalent with Gato booking very often. So who knows what they're going to do? Yeah. I would hope it's that just, they would do something yeah. else. But we're we're just after the best of the Super Juniors. There's no tournament to have because the G1 is happening now. Yeah. It's maybe interesting. Huh? Maybe Rey Mysterio has a match because that's something we didn't talk about. Rey Mysterio is going to be in New Japan August 10th during one of the G1 matches or, or shows. Maybe he yeah. faces a guy that maybe they do a little build up on the other G1 shows that uh, they do a mini cluster tournament where winner faces Rey Mysterio and the winner of that becomes a junior heavyweight champion. Mm. You could do that. Yeah, so someone's going to beat Mysterio then? Ishimori. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Like, I fucking, I mean, I guess I don't have a problem with that. Yeah, I mean, but like, it, it, to me, it would just be a, a, I don't know. You got Rey Mysterio. What else would you use Rey Mysterio for? Just a nondescript match against Liger or something? Eh. Yeah, I guess so. But uh, you know, it's just unfortunately, really, what this does is it gives the people who want to complain about dangerous moves and uh, new Japan dangerous and all this shit just gives them fucking ammo to come out and fucking complain like disco inferno that cunt yeah I mean wrestling is dangerous no matter where you put it you look at all the injuries and what's infinitely more dangerous working 300 nights a year or working harder for 150 nights a year you know what I mean people are still getting injured we went through the, the injuries in the WWE right now there's a slew of them everybody gets injured and they get injured for a long period of time. Now, sure, not everybody breaks their fucking neck, but accidents happen. I yeah. question. I really question, like, whether or not house shows need to be a thing. I don't think they do. Uh, you, you can still do some spot shows, but you don't need these guys on the road as long as they do. Like, yeah. You don't. Yeah. You don't need it. You're you're investing in these guys, but you're being a detriment to them as well. Your investment is not going to pay off. It, it can't be that much fucking money. Like how much money is like is the house show fucking loop? I mean, they're making money obviously, but they don't even need it. And I've never understood. Maybe you do it in seasons. Like, hey, you have a week, you know, this weekend we're doing or you know, for the next month every yeah. weekend we're running house shows but then you're off again you know it's like it's like those oh those japan japan tours that people used to do back in the day they go over to japan for six weeks and they tour you know what i mean you could yeah. do the same kind of deal in america with with the wwe and it's like you're hitting little clusters for for a month you know what i mean like we're going to do the east coast this month then we're going to take a month off we'll do the west coast next month yeah, I just, I, I mean, maybe it's just like they pay him this much. They're like, well, we f- they feel like they've got to get. Man, they only pay you know, like $100,000 a year for the most part, you know, unless you're like some star. <laughs> you, you know, know they, I mean? they feel like they got to get their money's worth out of it or something. You know, it's like fucking just let people work the show, you know, fuck it. Like give people time off. We've, we've talked about that before, too, where. Yeah. Guys should get, you shouldn't be on all year. You should get three months off. Yeah, and sporadic, like 
if it's like you work a couple months, you have a month off or whatever it is, because there's plenty of people who need to fucking go away for a while. You're fucking right. You're goddamn right. And it's just a shame that the only way they can go away is if they get injured. Yeah. And the worst thing about that is you don't get closure with them going away because they just got injured and disappeared. Like you can yeah, do an injury angle or a firing angle or a, you know he quits, goes away for three months, comes back and from the crowd beats the shit out of somebody. You can do a lot of good things. If you if you present something that's engaging, though, you wouldn't even need to do that. If no. some guy loses a match on a pay-per-view, and if on Monday night, the next day, you're coming out with new shit, interesting shit, here's some new angles, you're not even going to be like, whoa, where the fuck is Randy Orton? You know I mean? It's not going to fucking matter because people are going to be interested in what's coming up. Yep. Yeah. I agree. I agree. Just think about the fact, like, did you, <laughs> you know, Joe, I saw something like uh, Joe attacking Ty Dillinger before the show this week, before yeah. the show went on the air. And it's like, Samoa Joe, I fucking, oh yeah, he's on that show. They're doing jack shit with Samoa Joe, I don't understand. I, to me, Samoa Joe, well, like, have you seen the graphic that they're, the, the Samoa Joe, AJ Styles, Hell in the Cell graphic that has been leaked uh, yeah. around? Like, I don't know how true that is, because, I mean, Photoshop's one hell of a program, I can make that. But, and just say I found it on the internet, guys, that leaked. But, Right. I mean, uh, to me, that's where you need to go. And uh, the rumor is that they want to keep the title on AJ Styles because Vince is really high on AJ Styles. But uh, I feel like it's pretty cold at this point. It is. I mean, I don't know. It Maybe is. just the whole the whole show is not engaging. Uh, the angles aren't engaging, so maybe that's part of it too. But he's had it for a while. We, There's no also, nothing new. No, no, you're right. But we've also had the same feud with AJ Styles since January with Nakamura, and he when he won the Royal yeah. Rumble. So, I mean, it, it's going to be stale if you know you, you can't leave your bread out for weeks and expect it not to go hard and stale, right? You like, could really spice him up by putting uh, Gallows and Anderson yeah. with him. <laughs> Oh shit! Uh, yeah, you could. Uh, you put Gallows and Anderson with them, and you got yourself a little club. You got some heaters behind them. And Just have them face still too, because those guys are funny as fuck. They'd yeah. be entertaining as shit together. Yeah, I mean, maybe remember when the little bit of time they were. What what came of it? Beat up John Cena. That was funny. Yeah, <laughs> for like a week or two. Right, but you know they they'll get that line and say, okay, that's all we need now. We're going to say beat up John Cena for about three months. Yeah, because we need to sell T-shirts as many T-shirts as possible, right, guys? Fuck. Yeah. What else do you want to talk about from the G1 special other than our top three? Those are the the three main matches. Uh, Obviously, the Young Bucks and Sonata and Evil was a fantastic match. They told a good story. Um, Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Okada looked happy. He wasn't wearing his robe. He was all fucking. (laughs) He's going around with a red balloon with a smiley face on it. And (laughs) that's that's got to be. Because Okada doesn't have to spearhead these shows anymore. He doesn't have to be the main event. He can just have Oh, fun. dude, yeah, he gets to go out and, like, oh, I'm going to go out and do this little fucking tag thing. It's going to be awesome. Yeah, it's he's happy as shit. I say leave him, man. Fucking yeah, leave man, him. let him do his thing. Let his body recuperate. He's going to be in the G1. He Or, no, he's not in the G1. Yeah, he is. Yeah, he's in the yeah, G1. Yeah, he is. He yeah. is. Yeah, he has the, was a match against Jay White the first night or something like that. Or, oh, yeah, right. Um, yeah. But yeah, so he, he's obviously going to be giving his all in the G1 because he's Okada. That's just the way he works. He's going to go balls out. But at the same time, he doesn't need to win this G1. I feel yeah. like the re, he needs to rebuild himself now. He was the greatest champion of all time. Now he has to come back and be better than the greatest champion of all time. So now yeah. he has to rebuild himself. I say put him against Tanahashi rekindle that feud just be like okay you want to be rebuild yourself see if you can still beat tanahashi yeah uh, you, know what I mean? no, yeah, you don't yeah. have to put that on no, a wrestle you. kingdom right you can put that on a kings of pro wrestling you can put that anywhere i wouldn't want to see that on wrestle kingdom again we've seen that like five out of the last eight years but like yeah we don't need i also to feel like akata needs he needs new shit. He needs to, a completely new, not a completely new thing, but he needs an evolution, man. He needs to, aside from the robe and the falling money and all that shit, he needs to come up with something new. I, I think agree. Be I, I agree. Um, 
and maybe that is uh you know where they might be going with this maybe a balloon is this new thing <laughs> is that a new thing uh carry red balloon <laughs> yes uh, red balloon you know, 99 red balloons it was, it was uh, Stu right there. Uh, some, some... Stu, Stu trying to do fucking Japanese impression. <laughs> well, uh, I figured I figured that uh, some guy wanted to know my thoughts on the the Bret Hart and Martha situation on Twitter, and uh, that uh, Tyler Fudge guy he uh, he uh, he got a hold of me up here on Cloud Sixty Nine, and uh, I heard he called somebody a cunty poo, but uh, Owen agrees with him, so fuck you. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Martha, Martha's a hooer, and uh, Brett's no better. I wouldn't believe either one of them because they both lie their ass off. You know how many times I caught Brett in a cookie jar, and he blamed poor old Davy boy for putting the steroids in there and stuff. Ugh. It was bad news, bad news. But uh, I'm gonna go continue fucking my wife Helen, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna make uh, little heart babies here in heaven, and I'm gonna send them down on earth, and uh, they're gonna they're gonna stretch you out, Jim. Yeah. All right, well, there you go. It's too hard. <laughs> Toodle. The world needs you know, a fucking another heart. Uh, a new young heart. <laughs> yeah, and not Teddy Hart. <laughs> so Teddy's fucking getting his shit together, man. He's showing I mean, up to shows and stuff. Sure. Um, but, like, I can show up and be on time for work. Doesn't mean I'm a model employee. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, but, like, I've, I've watched some shoot interviews with Teddy Hart, man, and he's still the same Teddy Hart. He's yeah. still got an agenda. He's on these shoot interviews trying to be really nice and, and suck everybody's dick. That's basically what he's doing because he's burnt so many bridges. And this is just what he has to do now to get work. His matches yeah, Teddy are Hart, They're Teddy not Hart's good at fucking all. awesome, though. Well, yeah, yeah, he's, he can do awesome things, but his matches aren't good. No, but I'm saying, like, okay, yeah, but as a character, well, he's not even a character because it's actually him. <laughs> he's... He's an interesting fucking character. He's yes. like a legit fucking crazy person. It's awesome. He is. He's batshit crazy. And and yeah. I would love to see Teddy Hart prosper because it's a story that we've yeah. all watched for years. Teddy Hart being a fucking idiot. But I mean. Maybe he should. <laughs> you should probably just get check him for CTE, man. Oh, for sure, man. For sh- like he says, he's never done any drugs outside of weed. I don't believe that at all. Mm. At all. Look at it, man. The way he looks at stuff, <laughs> just like, dude, you're fucked. Yeah, <laughs> something happened but, to you. <laughs> from the G1 special, anything else? I didn't really have any. I mean, there's uh, no. nothing else on there. I mean, like you had your nondescript match, like Ishii and Yano against Suzuki and Saber. You no, know, that was okay. Somebody also wanted Suzuki and Ishii was Saber, fucking. But he wouldn't answer that question. He thought he was gay. So. Oh. Uh-huh. I thought Suzuki and Ishii was obviously awesome. Yeah. Oh, of course. And I like Yano in it too. I love Yano. I think Yano's great. I like him in, in where he needs to be. You know what I mean? Like his G one roles, where he just plays that comedic match. I, I like that. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. Fair, fair enough. enough. Fair enough. <laughs> and then we had uh, Hangman Page Squirrel against Tanahashi Kushida. Again, it was it was you know good match. I mean, it's not building to nothing or nothing that I know of, anyways. Yeah. But yeah, that's all yeah, I got. There you go. From there, what should we move into? Oh, move that's into a the question. the week in WWE, I <laughs> guess. I guess, yeah. I mean, I guess it blue. <laughs> you know, fucking blue. It, yeah. it, there was nothing good especially for a go home show you know what i mean like remember when we were kids jim or uh, sorry i was a kid you were a a teenager maybe <laughs> yeah but when go home shows happened they were a big deal yeah and now it, it's like oh what's this pay-per-view we got in five days oh right. yeah. you'll you, we all know you guys are all gonna watch it so we're not gonna even file the bother building <laughs> it's the lowest rated raw ever and hopefully it just gets lower and lower and lower because this needs to stop <laughs> dude it's so fucking bad it is and not even against anything it's not a holiday it's not against anything no i'd like to see people's uh excuses you know what i mean for this show and 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 like 
because it's always, you know, if you bring up the argument that WWE's ratings are falling and falling and falling and that it's a bad sign, you got yeah. all these people, yeah, well, look all the money they're making. It's like, yeah, yeah, sure, sure. But you look at Papa John's, their approval rating is abysmal. So I bet you they make all kinds of money. Yeah. Right? I still like Papa John's pizza. Dude, you know? dude, I fucking love it. That and their garlic aioli's fucking dipping sauce they got. Oh, mm. Fuck yes. I worked at Papa John's for like six Did months you? delivering pizza. Yeah. Oh, would you steal slices of pizzas out of people's, people's pizza? No, no, but I ate a fuckload of pizza. That's for damn sure. Well, I, I would too, man. It's like, I'm at Papa John's. Oh, I got to go deliver this. Can I get a pizza to go and I'll just snack on it on the way? <laughs> yeah, right. I you just eat pizza all day, every day. Hey, man. Nothing wrong with that, in my opinion. Right. Yeah. Whatever. But yeah, this show, I don't really have anything to say about Raw. I hated it. And, I did too. And the, Raw sucks, and I don't fucking like it. So yeah, you had you know they're they're doing the the same story over and over again. The last month of Raw has been Rollins and Ziggler. That's that's it. And how many times? And then this Reigns and event? Lashley shit. Yeah, I mean it's, oh, it's yeah. a pull apart. You know, it's the same nondescript pull apart WWE does all the like, time. Oh, fucking Paul Heyman wrote this segment big fucking deal. I've yeah. seen it a zillion fucking times. It First sucks. Time. I don't care. Tell me now, Jim, what makes this segment different than every other pull apart WWE has done? Nothing. 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 So therefore, what in the fuck did Paul Heyman contribute? Nothing. I don't know. Right? Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Is yeah, nothing me, at all. If if, if you want to put your name behind it, do something different. The angle is nothing. It's like Reigns a dickhead and wouldn't tag him in, and they lost a couple matches because of Reigns being a dickhead. Yeah, and so, now Bobby lost a smile, and he doesn't smile no more. He just gets ass. <laughs> I just don't know, dude. It's just so fucking retarded. Fucking dumb, yeah. But other than that, I mean, really looking at it, honestly, I don't No, I don't I mean, even care. I mean, we had just random women's tag matches. Mojo Raleigh beat No Way Jose again. There were uh, six matches on the whole show. Yeah, Bo Dallas versus Matt Hardy was a match. Fuck me. <laughs> right? And then we, it was just Constable Corbin in his suit and Oh, it's, just, it's all kinds of Constable Corbin, sorry, and Elias singing. What did they sing? Oh my God, dude! Loud. Itsy Bitsy Fowler, dude. Yes, like come on, man. Like this is this is this is it's got to yeah. go away. Well, this it's, is it. Got to go. I wonder why. I wonder why the fucking <clears throat> ratings are low. Uh, but yeah, like you know, BT was talking about a friend over at Shooting the Shiznit podcast. Check him out. Um, <laughs> about his mom. You know, she's, you know, I imagine an elderly woman. Yeah. Uh, that she watched always, all the time, fucking as habit. And this week, she said she didn't watch. And it was like, is it? I think that tells uh, quite the story. To to me, that because you know what? Let's let's face it. WWE's audience is the old people. You know what I mean? Like, that is the. That's all kinds audience. of people, but I'm just saying, if somebody who watched it this long all the time, every single week, said "fuck it," yeah, and the ratings happen to be the lowest, I know a lot of people are jumping off, man. A lot of people are like "fuck this show." Yeah, they don't even watch do. it anymore. I don't blame you. I wouldn't watch it if I didn't have to because it's awful. If it was up to me, this show wouldn't have Raw or SmackDown on. <laughs> well, I mean, what are you gonna do though? You know? Exactly. <laughs> We're gonna like. How many people want to tune into like you know Let's Tyler and Jim Lucha Tyler and Jim's New Japan Lucha Underground is great Happy Fun Time Hour. <laughs> it would it would make my life so much easier, but uh, I don't know how that would uh, equate to viewers. <laughs> so yeah, and these matches too are just the same shit again, right? Yeah, you know Bo and Matt. Well, I mean, was it a tag match or was no, it just no, a single? Just I don't even remember. Just a singles. Okay, so we've seen Matt versus one of them. He's lost to all of them. Over the last month, he's lost, you know, repeatedly. Mm-hmm. And, like, Liv Morgan defeated by Ember Moon again. What about last week was not deciding on this? Yeah, right. You know? To me, it's... Yeah. it's no way Jose numbers. also did not have his entrance. So, you, you know this deal, right? We've seen this one before, where these guys come up, and they get booked like fuck, they don't get over, and then like, oh, Adam Rose lost his entrance now. <laughs> He's got no more fucking Rosebuds, or he doesn't get entrances. No way Jose had no entrance here. And and you know what, man? 
I'm sure I'm sure he he did his Congo line during a commercial break. And to me, as long as the crowd sees it, I'm cool. I don't need to see that Congo line ever again. But it does well, say a you. lot. It does say a lot to how they view No Way Jose. Yeah. Really, if you're looking for a good, good like rundown of the experience of this show, just uh, go over to Wrestling Soup. Joe Numbers went to this show. <laughs> he had Maybe. a yeah, he had VIP luxury box fucking tickets, and he, he just runs it. I mean, it's just awful. Yeah, so he is a really good uh, account of being at this show. So. I would say, like, well, at least you were at the lowest rated Raw of all time, but that's going to be probably, Every well, I mean, they probably will be, actually, because after the pay-per-view, it'll probably tick up a little bit. Actually, you're probably right. Um, so this could actually, stand maybe to for a month. There's a lot of competition next week, Jim. A lot of competition. I can't remember what it is, but there's a lot, because I'm not a huge American sports fan. There's a lot going on next week that, that will um, interfere with Raw and SmackDown, or maybe just SmackDown. Um, so who knows, man? They, if they don't generate a lot of um, the talking with throughout the, the in-circles about the Extreme Rules pay-per-view, it could be the another lowest of all time. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's going to be bad. Like it was lower than the like the Trump Clinton debate. It was lower than everything. Everything. Yeah. And it had nothing to it was so bad. Like this abysmal and Smackdown was not much better. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm done with the raw. Smackdown, yeah. I mean, it's it's just not really much either. I don't know. I hate no. to be I hate to be like, uh, fuck, it, it, it fucking sucks, but it sucks, dude. The only thing that I continue to like on SmackDown <laughs> is Daniel Bryan's uh, uh, portrayal of, of, you know, him and Kane. Right? Like when uh, like we calling out Kane for, quote, in sync. I thought that was fucking hilarious. And then when, uh, see, that's where me and you differ. I thought that was fucking funny. But it's not what he says. It's how he says it. Like, uh, I, just, I, I, just, I don't know. The, this is really the only thing I like on SmackDown. It's not even the same portion. Daniel Bryan. Like a 50-year-old guy talking about NSYNC and shit. <laughs> I don't know. What's really ironic about it, though, is Kane was always the monster, right? And now he's like this geeky, nerdy old man as Kane. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, it's so weird. But uh, I don't know. It's got a little bit of charm yeah. to it for me. I mean, you're, dude, Nakamura and Styles. Again. Again. And guess what, Jim? Another DQ. <laughs> oh, fuck. Of course it's another DQ. Yeah. The only good thing here was, like, Rusev was on commentary. Rusev was very good on commentary. All the pumping iron references really popped me. Um, yeah, he, he interferes. It's a DQ. Hardy down for the save. I don't know why. Okay. <laughs> I don't know either. AJ, maybe, maybe, uh. He's trying to get AJ Styles back for uh, when he hurt AJ Styles' feelings by going into the ring all coked out against Sting. So he's like, oh, I got to get AJ Styles back. And then Paige comes out and sets up a tag match. So we're just rolling from that into a tag match. <laughs> so and, and, and it's whatever. I'll give you the God's honest truth. I skipped that tag match because I oh, yeah. Rusev pins Rusev pins Hardy. And Hardy just has lost, dude. Like, I, I ran it down one week on here. It, he just, he loses every single thing since he won the belt. He wins the belt and then lose, 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 lose. <laughs> it's so stupid, man. They just don't yeah. care. They'll just beat him all the fucking time. Whatever. For a while, he was using, like, losing one-on-one -on -one non title tag matches or non title singles matches, too. It's, it's the state of the <clears throat> WWE. Oscar Ellsworth. He ends up spraying her in the eyes with something like it's fuck, dude. I would imagine that's going to play a part in the pay-per-view match this weekend. That hairspray or whatever the fuck it is. But oh god, who knows? He'll go to spray Oscar and accidentally spray Carmella or something. Well, like it's a Ellsworth is in a shark cage, and we all know how those always end. Dude, since they fucking built that latest shark cage, like, well, we did that shark cage, so. Just keep using it. And yeah. it's like someone's like, hey, use that fucking shark cage. Yeah, we need to sell more shark cage toys. It's like everywhere. I think it's dumb. Um, Sin Cara got defeated by Andrade. Andrade uh, finally made his way back to TV. 
in a fun match. I love it. I don't it. know who agented this match. Did you find an issue with the agenting? I did. Well, like there was um like, you talking about like the kind of moves they did because like they directly stole the Lee Takahashi double foot stomp to the outside. <laughs> No, I'm talking about like it's dude, they they gave Sin Cara oh, a bunch. Way too it was much. like they were trying yes. to it's like they were trying to showcase him. Yeah. Not Andrade. Exactly. That's that Jim, that <laughs> is weird. the full thing that went through my mind because I texted you after I watched that match and I was like, Man, yeah. I'm a fan of Sin Cara. <laughs> but what I didn't say is that that's the not what I should be feeling after that match. It should be, holy fuck, I'm a fan of Cien Almas. But no, yeah. no, you made Sin Cara what you did was you elevated Sin Cara and made Andrade lowered, and which was the exact opposite of what you wanted to do. And, and man, it's it's fuck, man. Like how how can you do this? Like why? Like I don't I don't get it. I just, it's, it's, yeah. it makes no sense. There's no sense to be made of it. Yeah, yeah. I don't but know. it was a good match. So well, what can we say? <laughs> it I was guess fun. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it the hell out of it. Yeah, you gonna are you going to enjoy seeing it again? Yeah, because you know, you know we're going to see it again, Jim. Oh yeah, on Sunday. Oh seriously, that's that's a yeah. match on Sunday. <laughs> yeah, they added it to the pre-show. Why? Why? <laughs> There's not in one instance has Sin Cara came out the victor in any time that they've uh, ever met. But there's like fuck ten it. matches on the main card for that show. I I will say it here. I will not watch that show live. Oh that's fuck no! I, I have a fucking chance. Off. No, dude, you can piss off with that shit. Yeah. Uh, it's bad. Oh, did you see Kane had Pyro at the end? Oh, he did too? Yeah. All that Fox money's paying off, eh? Like, all right, well, we'll go out there and do one firework. <laughs> well, I mean, Kane has, that whole raising the arms thing has just been stupid since they got rid of the Pyro. It just doesn't make yeah. sense. It's like, what's he doing, turning the lights on? Undertaker did that in 93. <laughs> Yep. Ooh, you can turn a dial knob. Good for you. Are we previewing fucking extreme rules? I mean, we might as well. <laughs> We've already my, gotten there. My extreme rules predictions. Disappointment. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Disappointment, anger, and sadness. All so let's see here. One. Andrade will defeat Sankara. Uh, New Day are taking on Sanity in a tables match on the pre-show, which like this match would be awesome somewhere on the show, yeah. but it's going to be on the pre-show, so it's not going to get the time. It's not going to be cool. I don't understand. Why do we have to watch some of these other matches in here? Why is Finn Balor and Baron Corbin on the main fucking show and not this? It, I, this this is, I don't I don't know, man. I really don't know. It, there's no story behind Finn Balor and Baron Corbin other than the fact that Baron Corbin put Balor's name instead of Spider in a song. But I, it's, it, that's, that's it. And that's the extent of WWE feuds these days. Or Braun Strowman and Kevin Owens, who, come on now, they, a steel cage match where the focus is the guy has to run away. And escape is that's that's how you're going to com- combat Kevin. Owens trying to run away. You put him in a match where the, where the object is to run away. Good job. He might not be able to crawl out though if he's afraid of heights this week. <laughs> mm. Fuck, <laughs> you're right. <laughs> he probably will be afraid of heights again because oh. it just you know goes at random. So this could be a good match, but it's on the pre-show, so probably not. Alexa Bliss, Nia Jax. I just extreme rules match, Jim. <laughs> Why? I don't know. Why? Why not? I guess. Hey, fuck. <laughs> because it's the Extreme Rules pay per view. Extreme Rules should not be a pay per view. No, no, <laughs> definitely not. TLC should not be a pay per view. Hell in a Cell should not be a pay per view. No, <laughs> all, Royal, all Rumble. Three of those, yeah. Royal Rumble should. Yeah, Money in the Bank. Yes. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Uh, but when it comes to a Hell in a Cell, you would be so much better off being surprised and having the Hell in a Cell match come into a feud that deserves it not having yeah. a feud plopped into a hell in the cell match because this month is hell in the cell yeah 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 it's <laughs> fucked up dude if you go back to the raw thing just briefly um he kind of gets into joe numbers got into detail about like how they present the show live and it's awful dude they really 
have lost their fucking way. Like what? What? What do you mean by like? What did like, they do live? Like I don't. They get just it. play commercials when there's commercials. Oh, yeah. You went to these things, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's well. That's why I was wondering if it was different from what I've seen. Is like you get these weird videos. Everything goes dark. The wrestler stands in the ring. We watch a video with the wrestler. Yeah. And then we come back and the lights come on and his music is playing. And he pretends like he hasn't stopped doing it. They'll tell you like the announcer get on the mic and be like, "Hey, just so you know, we're back from commercial in ten, nine. It was like, man, like this is taking me out of everything. Just awful. Yeah, it just the show's not entertaining, dude. What is entertaining about this shit? <clears throat> I, I just, I don't know. Raw, I, nothing. I not want to fucking go. That Raw show ends. Oh, anyway, moving on. <clears throat> what else we got here? Uh, we got Matt. the Bludgeon Brothers taking on Team Hell No. Yeah. Which, again, another... <laughs> Like, sure, Luke Harper and Daniel Bryan could have a hell of a match. But you add Rowan and Kane, and, well, I mean, you're adding Rowan and Kane, so self-explanatory. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, I, don't, <laughs> I think the Bludgeons retain here. Yeah. I would imagine so. I don't see the point on having Daniel Bryan win that title, especially right away. To me, it, it's a better story for a chase. I think the Miz is going to get involved. Probably, yeah. But I mean, yeah. we heard from Daniel Bryan himself. He doesn't even think they can do it. No, they so. can't. What else we got? We've got Tons. Jeff Hardy and Nakamura, which I would imagine Nakamura becomes the champion because that's just what makes sense. It's not going to do anything. No, I'm mean, not going to matter anymore. You know how Vince loves a foreign heel to be the U.S. champion. Mm-hmm. He loves it. Then we've got the deleter of worlds and the B team. <laughs> I'm not going to watch that match. And <laughs> who gives a fuck? That's where the tag team division is on that show. Yeah. No revival, no nope. uh, AOP on this show either. No. Nope. Raw, by the okay. way. Or on the pay per view. Let's not give you what you want. Let's just give you what you've seen for years and years and years. So fuck you. I mean, we're not even, some of these, we're not even picking. I just don't even care enough to, to, to think about no, it. Like, boy, I wonder who we I don't even care. The whole point of picking a show is is it only works when there's logic in the show when there's no logic 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 in a show you can do whatever the fuck you want and there's no rhyme or reason what's the fun in picking something that's a crap shoot it's yeah, like it's yeah. like it's like being like hey i'll i'll give you 20 bucks if you get three of the lottery numbers right tonight okay <laughs> like fuck man like it's just the same thing Oh shit! Jeff Balor Corbin, don't give a fuck at all about no, that. No, none, no fucks to be given. Reigns I'm gonna go Balor win. Oh, yeah. Balor wins. I would imagine. Reigns and Lashley. Uh, is this the number one contenders match? No, they have yeah, no one knows nothing, right? Yeah. How could it, fucking oh my god! How could Roman Reigns even be in a? In that position at this point, I I don't know how many but, times is this guy supposed to lose to like Brock Lesnar? Well, it's even got I don't even feel where, like you can even. I don't feel like you could even really do another Reigns versus Lesnar match. I like don't without it being it. like you're committing suicide pretty basically by doing yeah. that. You're doubling down on stupidity if you do that again. Even if like Reigns wins this time, oh my god, <laughs> <laughs> it's it's fucking. I can't even, dude. I, 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 I'm holding out hope that SummerSlam will come, Reigns will win the title, Braun Strowman will cash in, and Braun Strowman will be the king man. I really hope. I really, that's got to be it. It really has to be, doesn't it? Doesn't Lashley Lesnar seem like way more fucking interesting to everybody? Then like, what? I'm not saying like, oh, Lashley Lesnar is going to be awesome, but it's more interesting than Reigns and Lesnar. Oh, of course. Of course. Um, but, I mean, it's only going to be so good. Lashley's not a great wrestler. He's just strong, no. <laughs> but uh, right. I mean, he's like like Burberry says, he's Colbert. I fucking I go with Reigns because Reigns must pose. Never pick. <laughs> I never pick against Reigns. No, you're you're you be you be a fool to bet against Reigns. <laughs> it's like good Cena isn't a fucking move. It's go Cena. Yeah, yeah. We've got a thirty minute Iron Man match between Dolph Ziggler and Seth Rollins. Jesus Christ, man. I know, man. I know. Does this have to be 30? I'm not watching this. I don't give a fuck. 30 minutes. Why? have seen this there's, match already so many times. There's 12, Why? including the pre-show, there are 12 matches on this show. Yeah, 
Well, it's, and this, uh, what's the point of this? There's been no build to this being a 30 minute match. You know, like if there's a 30 minute match, you know, I, you'd have to, first off, you'd have to have uh, time limits. And maybe if you have a time limit draw, okay, then you, that's how you build to it. But yeah. they don't even have time limits anymore, the silly motherfuckers. The only build that they're doing is that they've been trading wins. That's it. And, and it's. And Iron Dude, Man it's match already is over. loosely like, based about trading wins, but like it's, it's an Iron Man match works so much better if, again, like you said, there was a time limit draw or or bullshit like that, or you know this guy won by a count out here, you know, that way the count out counts in the overall of the match. But I mean, Dude. An Iron Man match in a in a show with fucking was it eighteen hundred matches on it? Like, yeah. Man, that's too much. It's like putting an Iron Man match on WrestleMania. It makes no sense. I wonder if they'll each win one, and then it'll come down to the third one. Oh, I wonder. And then As Drew time Galloway expires, gets, in, yeah. gets involved. Oh, yeah, because yeah, he, he, he beat Rollins. Ringside. <laughs> Man, like, how? I was how like, surely Rollins will beat him here yeah. because you wouldn't actually do it this way. But, oh, 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 Jim, you put too much faith. <laughs> Into the WWE. <laughs> Fucking hey. What else is left on here? Let's get this Carmella um, and Oscar. Yeah, fuck. We've talked enough about Carmella and Oscar. The main event, Jim, I never thought that I would say this because of, of being a huge fan of Rusev, but the main event is AJ Styles versus Rusev. And what a way to make nobody give a fuck about your show. Yeah. Yeah, you're way too late on. The, I've always said that before, right? You're too way too late on the Rusev thing, and you didn't actually do anything to build it. You just went from like zero to a hundred. Like, yeah, we we said this, I believe, last week. They just gave him the Jinder Mahal treatment, and look where Jinder Mahal is now. All right. Rusev will be there in a few months because yeah, you put can't... Rusev in there. He's not going to draw the the eyes that they they thought he would at the beginning because you know they waited too goddamn long, and then. He'll just be uh, finding his inner peace with his little uh, Maharaja buddy there and uh, yeah. getting pictures taken and just being weird. Oh, yeah, Jinder. Yeah, he's like stole Matt Seidel's gimmick. He, yeah. I forgot to mention that. He was doing that on the house show when he came here. Oh, was he? Matt Seidel does that so much better on yeah. Impact. I watched because, I mean, <laughs> I watched some of Impact this week, and I thought it was pretty good, and I would like to continue watching it. Yeah. It's pretty good. Uh, what else we got? Is that it? Uh, I'm just going to do a quick look Yeah, that's uh, it. Lord yeah, Strowman Owens. Is. Strowman and Owens. Yeah, we talked about that because uh, Steel Cage match, right? Yeah. But yeah. Fuck. <laughs> like a fucking. It's going to be like some four and a half hour show. Oh, yeah. You know it will be. Four and a half. It's a big dog. <laughs> Fuck. I'm not going to spend my Sunday night watching it, I don't think. No, no. I usually like to start late. I like to start later on, and then I can skip a lot of shit. But what am I skipping to would be the question. Yeah. No, the the one match that looks really good on paper, in my opinion, <clears throat> is Rollins and Ziggler. There's a big problem with it, though, and that's that we've seen this match for like every week for the past five weeks. The match I'm most interested in, honestly... Is Sanity and New Day in a tables match from the pre-show. And it's only going to be a 10-minute match on the pre-show, probably. Yeah. With oh, yeah, fucking, sure. like, six table spots in that 10 minutes. <laughs> and, like, six commercials. Oh. Then again, again, hot tonight. Da, 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 da. <laughs> I, was, I was like, where have I heard that song before? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck this. Fuck the WWE. Yes. Uh, how about I play a nondescript music and we'll go into a next segment? Okay. Lucha! 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 Underground? <laughs> what do you think of Lucha Underground? Not lost this music. I thought Lucha Underground was pretty good. Um, you know, Cage and Mil Muertes as the main event, it, it worked. Uh, the three-way, uh, you know, pitting the trios champions against each other for Aztec medallion. I didn't really like the, the the stipulation to it, but whatever. I mean, you can't win them all. Yeah, sacrificio. This episode is called. Yes, yes, they sacrifice another guy that I don't give a fuck about. 
a.k.a. <laughs> Cortez Castro. And Is that it, then? In, yeah, he's done. He's gone. He's got to be because he's sacrificed. He's dead. The gods ate him, Jim. Yeah. Unless they come back as, like, fucking undead shells or something. Oh, yeah, just like those WWE figures, the WWE zombie figures. Brock <laughs> yeah, Lesnar yeah. has, like, 18 arms. Oh, God. Ben, he's uh, sacrificed by Matanza. Uh, I like the Evil East Joey Ryan match. I thought that was fun. Yeah, it was fun. It was fun. It was. Uh, I like Evil East doing the uh, chest hair toss. That's fucking great. <laughs> I just uh, one thing I don't like is Evil East's hair. I just too much red. What is she, Eva Marie? Yeah, I mean, I guess I think she's fucking hot. I oh, like. I think uh, she's hot too, but I, I, I like lots of colored hair. Well, I mean, I like some color. I don't like red, though. I'm not a fan of that red hair. I like a traditional red hair, but not <clears throat> red. And maybe it's because of Eva Marie. Maybe Eva Marie just ruined it for me. Uh, yeah, I like that Antonio set up that the, the three-way with uh, the trio's champs. Um, it was interesting that Mac and Havoc both get a medallion because kills. So, the, so if you're pinned, you don't get shit. Yeah. But everyone else gets one, so... Yeah, it's, it's, I thought it was an interesting step. It's an interesting step, but we're getting very close to particip- participation awards in wrestling, and that's not something we need. Yeah, and Killshot here, too, it kind of works to build. Like, Killshot's kind of going heel. Yeah. I don't know what. He's been hinting at that all season, how he's had a different, you know, his character has changed since he killed Dante Fox. <laughs> yeah, right, that match with the shit. Yeah. <laughs> uh, here, you can hear it on pay-per-view take, too. Oh really? Where I turned Jared, I turned Jared into a believer on that one. Yeah, I, like is it, which, which you guys did that episode. Ultimate yeah, kill Lucha? shot. Yeah, uh, yeah, kill shot. Well, we did kill that? shot uh, months ago. Kill shot oh. and Ar Fox. Yeah, the stages, three stages of hell. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yes, sir. Uh, I was also a huge fan of uh, the White Rabbit Tribe going down into that acid trip of a house to see Killer Cross. <laughs> Yeah, I dude, man, I I will say this. Um, I seen a Killer Cross segment on Impact, and this Killer Cross segment here, the fucking guy can talk. Yeah, he, he can, can talk. talk really well. I don't know what his work is like, but I found, especially being such a uh, Twin Peaks fan, this whole deal with them going down the rabbit hole or whatever. Oh yeah, it was so Twin Peaksy, and I fucking loved it. As you know, like, Twin Peaks has the little midget. <laughs> going around they got their midget following them around it's so great, in like man. the tree root cage i don't even know what's going on well yeah and it's they, like a tree cage i was like am i watching a uh, joel schumacher batman film is that bane in a cage next to killer cross <laughs> like what the fuck is going on <clears throat> it's still masquerita it's the same guy but he's like a dark version of it is i that guess what that is well, I don't think it's the same character, but i bet the same guy is yeah. playing that character it makes so much sense though it makes so much sense he, but yeah, he uh, they ask, I guess, who is he? The White Rabbit, the yeah. real White Rabbit. Yeah, like what you know, <laughs> what they want, and uh, or what he wants, and he says, you know, he has to kill the man who brought him here, and then we get this like. Paul London in slow mo with like epic classical music of playing, just bludgeoning the little man like just buckets of blood splashing up on him and shit. Like it was what so the fucking fuck? good. I I loved it. I thought that that was the <laughs> best ending to any Lucha Underground episode I've ever seen, and I believe it's the first time we've seen the Rabbit Tribe this season. So and what a uh, fucking <laughs> debut that was. You know, yeah, awesome. I'm interested, man. We'll see what happens with the Killer Cross. I know, like uh, Jared's a big fan. He was saying, like, I'm gonna start. You know, maybe I have to start watching Lucha now. That he's gonna be on there. Yeah, see, so, I've never heard yeah. of him on until now, but I mean, I guess yeah. Some of those guys have been following him um, on his, on the way up here, but um, yeah, that's pretty much the gender guy. I thought it was awesome. If you are not watching other these, some of these other wrestling shows, now that we've gotten this shitty WWE out of the way. We talked about all these other great wrestling shows. You need to watch these if you don't. Don't give up on wrestling. No, just give up God. on WWE. There's no reason you're you know? you're not a true you're not actually a fan of wrestling if the WWE turns you off from all of it. Um, you just yeah. don't know what just real stop. wrestling actually is. 
Stop watching it because you know you're listening to podcasts. I'll tell you about. I'll tell you about what happens. You come back here, baby. Yeah. I'll tell you how fucking shitty Raw was. Exactly. Spend the time you would watch Raw and watch fucking Lucha Underground, or maybe you could watch Impact or NXT. Yeah. Let's talk about it in NXT. Was there anything you want to talk about here? I mean, the Mustache Mountain match with uh, Undisputed was great. Um, yeah. Uh, I, they dropped the fantastic. title belts here. Yeah, which I knew was coming because that got spoiled for me. Uh, but I was not expecting it this soon. Yeah, it seemed like oh, we'll just put it on these guys to pop the fucking crowd over yes. here. And then I don't know. It's, I mean, I get it. But at the same point, I feel like they are a fucking great tag team. And, and But you know? you know what, though? They, they built up uh, Mustache Mountain in a way that uh, they couldn't have done without doing this angle. And that's having Trent Seven. Uh, never tap out to that leg lock. Yeah. And uh, oh, dude, they really told a good story there. Yeah, they did. They did, and I, I thought it was great, man. You you got a surefire NXT takeover. Brooklyn is going to have the the same too, and I would imagine because yeah. you can't just that can't be your your rubber match there. You got to go and have another one, especially after that finish. Yeah, that'd be awesome. It's a good call. Um, other than that, I mean. You know, Cole and Danny Birch had a good match. Yeah. I really liked them. Um, Cole won that. Um, Vanessa Bourne was so hot. Oh, Jim, I, <laughs> I've, I, I'm in love with her. I may start stalking her. <laughs> <laughs> she loses to uh, Kyrie Sane. Oh, and so. that's another person I would stalk to. Fuck yeah. Yeah. She's talking about she wants the belt. I feel like we need to get it on with it, put the belt on her. Fuck this Shane Baszler. Guy, he shouldn't even have the women's <laughs> belt. It's a goddamn outrage. <laughs> it's a fucking travesty. Huh. You got anything else on NXT? NXT? No, it was pretty, uh, pretty by the numbers NXT show. But think about the matches we've seen this week, Jim, and then uh, New Japan. We had four or five fantastic matches on New Japan. So somehow narrowed that down to a top three. Then uh, NXT has those Adam Cole, Danny Birch, and then Mustache Mountain and Undisputed, which are both really good matches. And then Lucha Underground had Brian Cage and Mil Muertes, which was a balls to the wall match. And Dude, fucking a Haas fight, man. Haas. Yes, I love Haas fights, man. Don't want them every week, but you get me one every now and then. Fuck a fall for it every oh, yeah. time. Also, it's, Katrina yes. in red since uh, she came back to life. Right, right, right. Right? It's going to happen, man. Some point in time, if Lucha Underground doesn't get canceled at some point in time, we'll know that Tala Fudge is right and she's Dario's Lady mother. in red <laughs> is dancing <laughs> with me. Who sings that again? Lady no idea. in red. You're like, fuck, she is so hot. It's ridiculous. Oh, I know. Especially now. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't know. I, I really liked her in, in the half naked dominatrix get up. Chris DeBerg. Do you want to hear? That? That's who sings Lady in Red. Oh, yeah, yeah. Throw it on. Can you hear it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, baby. Anyways. <laughs> what? <laughs> what are we doing with this, though? I don't know. Maybe this could be our islands in the stream this time. But no. <laughs> yeah, you, there was one other match that I failed to talk about. That was balls to the wall. And that was on Impact this week. Yeah, man. Did you? How much Impact did you watch? Just the main? I Well, I was pressed for time, so I was looking for the main. And while looking for the main, there were a couple spots that I could not help but watch. Like the uh, Killer Cross bit. Um, the Matt Seidel promo, and uh, even though it was Madison Rain, I knew where they were going with it, so I wanted to see that and uh, where she's going with Allie and then uh, the Demon Bunny. Yeah. So in the beginning of the show, um, King and the new, I guess they're just called OG, but they're the OG LAX. Um, they challenged the current LAX to a 5150 street fight. That's going to be awesome. Yes, it will be. And I would imagine that's going to be a slam anniversary. I imagine. Which is do you know shaping up to be a show that I would like to watch. Oh, yeah. Do you know who Shotzi Blackheart yes, is? Yes, I do. Uh, she was, I used to watch uh, Hood Slam. And uh, she used to be in Hood she Slam. She cuts the dumbest fucking promo backstage. I'm not surprised. 
and barks like a dog at the end. She's just like trying way too hard. And she's got every gimmick. She's got a helmet with yeah. horns and she's yeah. got a coat. And she's got a fucking flag and she's got a green hair. And she fucking does like 47 different poses on the ramp and like 900 poses in the ring. And it's like, holy fuck, man. <laughs> it's got everything. And she's everything, not even, everything. She's not even that good of a wrestler. Yeah. Post, um, Allie wins post match. She gets attacked by Tessa Blanchard. So, uh, did you hear that Tessa Blanchard's uh, signed a long term deal with Impact? Hmm. There you go. Um, there's this bullshit with you know. That's one thing I don't like about Impact right now. Aries. I fucking can't stand this guy. I don't want to see him anymore. He's an acquired taste. That's for sure. It's weird because like behind him in WWE, he right? goes like leaves there, and it's like. <laughs> Well, I mean, it's I, I I don't know. There's something about Austin Aries that. How are you trying to tell me Austin Aries and Moose is anything? That's your big fucking title feud. I don't. I don't Especially going so. in the slam anniversary. Yeah, dude. <laughs> it doesn't do it for me. Aries lays out D'Angelo Williams, who fucking shouldn't even be on the show, but whatever. <laughs> now, there's there's one thing to say that he his only wrestling match was a good match for a guy who's never wrestled before. Yeah. But he's not a wrestler. <sighs> Eli Drake defeats Grado. Dummy. Oh my. That sounds like a barn burner. <laughs> well, Joe Hendry watches. After match, Hendry and Drake kind of fucking get into it. So that's going to be uh, the upcoming feud as well. I think that's cool. Hendry and Drake, I could get behind that. You got two guys that can talk their asses off. They can build that feud really well. Dude, I'm just going to say it. Like, I fucking like Eli Drake. I don't even care that he's like a shitty rock ripoff. I like him, dude. He's, he's, dude, he can talk. He can fucking talk. When yeah. I was watching and the Impact, character he was entertains one of the highlights. me, man. Yeah. You know? Hell, it, yeah, or tell me, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when he stands in there and he's got the button and shit, it's entertaining. <laughs> it yeah. is. It is. He's a, he's a good dick. He might not yeah. be a great worker, but he can talk, and it, it really just outshines. It, it makes him look bigger and, and more of a star so I, w- I was trying to figure this out somebody was mentioning this in the group as well does it seem like lucha underground at least i don't know if they're just ripping off the style or if somebody is helping them or what's happening because a lot of the shit on this show is very lucha underground this killer cross thing the whole thing with sue young is like super lucha underground i uh, i i really think it all boils down to the um broken mat stuff that they really hit on last year and uh, i think they're trying to get lightning in a bottle again with by going that route again you know the the macabre stuff really worked for them with uh what were they called abyss in them and rosemary decay oh yeah decay. Uh, so that worked out well for them that was you know they were a good group i liked them uh you got uh, uh you've you know what's her name again sue young she's a great mm. character awesome character she's a good worker her titty fell out in a match a little while ago that was cool uh, <laughs> <laughs> the killer cross vignette was filmed really fucking cool wasn't it though it really yeah. was i thought that the the effects they had on that was was dope i didn't get yeah. to see any of the sue young stuff this did week. you see oh dude it's like she's following around i don't even know who is that bitch oh madison rain that's sue young okay madison I, didn't, rain. I didn't know if that was yeah. uh Allie. Because Allie's gone all demonish too, right? Isn't after she? the show ends this week, after the match, they have a closing video of uh, she's being surrounded by corpse undead brides. Yeah, and then you get like a jump scare of Sue Young <laughs> at the end. Like this is a close up coming at the camera. It's like holy fuck! <clears throat> they're they're doing awesome. something right. They're doing something right, and I'm 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 actually excited to uh, to watch it in full next week because yeah. you know if. Don't, if I, I, anybody, if I say, time, don't I watch the show live because there is way of too course. much bullshit. Of I course. mean, this show could be an hour. I don't know. Most, but, uh, uh, I will. I I might be in the minority for this, but all wrestling shows should be an hour. Well, I mean, it's like fine if you want to do that, but don't show me an entire old match on the show. That's fucking weird. It is. It is. And they did it no again sense. this week. I forget. They've been doing that for much. like two years, and I don't know why. Oh, yeah. Nobody's ever. They don't have enough shit. No. Well, yeah, have a shorter show. 
boom, done. You know what I mean? Make it an hour. Fuck. And a half. I mean, it doesn't matter. No, no, it's only t- the hour and a half. What do you do if somebody's got to put on a half an hour show after? You can't yeah. find yourself in half hours. Instead of having a two hour show, having an hour and a half show and then a half an hour recap after. You know what I mean? Like have these guys Something. talk about what's going on. It's so easy to do it, but you don't need this fucking stupid match that people seen years ago. Oh, Bobby Roode no. is cool right now. Let's put a Bobby Roode match on our television. That'll get people on her. <laughs> Uh, and yeah, main event, OVE taking on Swan, Penta, and Phoenix. It is fantastic. You should go and seek it out and that watch it. That fucking cutter, man. Dude. Dude, there right? Something else. Something else. Yeah. There was a lot of spots in this match oh, that were fuck, like... You're goddamn fucking... right there was. Like, I'm still not a fan of Dave and Jake Christ. Yeah. For, I, I, the Matt. blonde one looks really plain Jeff. dumb. Yeah, Jeff, Jeff Chris. Jeff Chris. Uh, at least Dave Chris got that great big beard and uh, hairstyle. He looks different. But I don't know the little fucking blonde asshole one. He looks like just a little cunt. Yeah. He looks like the little brother who would like, you know, so like the big one and like fucking punch you and knock you down. And then that little cunt would come up and like kick you in the ribs, you know? Exactly. And, and, and so he fits that pretty well. He does. He does fit that pretty well. But hey, I just find he's so plain compared to the other one. And the other, he's, yeah. he's, there's, he's still wearing like suits and stuff. Like button yeah. up shirts. I don't like that. Yeah. You're, a wrestler. you're a wrestler. You're not a fucking businessman. You, you, well, okay, I guess you are a businessman outside the wrestling ring, but inside the wrestling ring, you're not a businessman. You're a wrestler. So I think Brooklyn he was part. responsible for a lot of the great shit in here, though. He was the one who did the cutter. Yeah, he, he was the one who was a fucking crazy enough to take a package pile driver on the apron. Yeah. What the fuck? Oh, and I, I'm not taking nothing away from his work <clears throat> style or anything like that, but I just don't like that look. That look just makes me not want to see it. And... Okay, I'm I'm in the minority for this too. I know it. Sammy Callahan is not a draw in my opinion. I don't like that. Oh, I, don't like Sammy yeah. uh, to I me, like him. I that like thumbs him. up, thumbs down thing is the stupidest thing in the world. What what thumbs up and thumbs down? What is it? What can you explain to me? Thumbs up, thumbs down, or is it just some st- stupid thing? Yeah. Some retarded kid said one day, and Sammy Callahan heard it. You well, can't he tell saw me fucking. Uh, he saw Triple H do it. So <laughs> with, so with now, Randy Orton. That's what that is, man. Yeah. Thumbs up. Yeah. Is, I just don't like it. I like it. I like him as a talker. I think he's got a cool voice. I think he can talk really well. I love their backstage things that they do where they're filmed just super glitchy and fucked up and the camera's really close up and the See, other two assholes I are behind them. Oh, it looks fucking awesome. Right? I'm, does, I'm yeah. strictly going by the the entrance that Sammy Callahan did with the thumbs up, mm-hmm. thumbs down. It's just, to me, it's... Oh. I've always liked that guy, so I'm, I'm like a fan. I like Sammy Callahan as a worker, but this yeah. whole uh, th- this whole talk to Sammy Callahan is a a, a star. No, a star he is not. Mm, yeah. I, I disagree. <laughs> but, hey, man, that's cool. That's cool. We all got different opinions, and that's the greatest thing about wrestling. Just don't it's, call me a cunty poo. Just don't call my me safe a cunty poo because the doctor said my mother was a cunt before she died. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> he, I think he'll probably listen to this show, right? I, because he's it, like, oh, because he? you know he will, right? He'd be like, I'm not listening to your show anymore, which did he ever. But he'll listen to this like, oh, I wonder if they're going to talk about me so I can jack off to it. Ugh. Hey, yo, Dan. Dan from Philly. Take a long suck on the side of my soggy love muscle, you cunty poo. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Turn um, heel, baby. Turn and heel. <laughs> all right, man. From there, we can uh, talk about the G1. I'm just going to go ahead and say this at first. Like, the G1 is like Super Juniors. It overwhelms me. <laughs> I can't. I can't watch it all. Even if you're like, oh, I'm just going to watch the great matches. You can't even do that. It is True. too much for me. Okay, let's let's look at the night that I guess I, I guess it happened already. I assume the first night was last night, but I'm not 100 Yeah, it already sure. happened. Yeah, so you had Okada J. White, which I'm sure it's a good match. Tanahashi oh, Suzuki, they always have great matches. And then Elgin and Evil, I'm sure was a great match. And that's yeah. just your first night. That's three matches. You also had Bad Luck Folly against Hangman Page. Nobody gives a fuck about it. But it does tell a good story, I bet you, with the, the, the what do you call them? Fucking, uh, um, 
the firing firing squad. This it's got me off. I, mean, I can't even think. The firing it sound squad. like there's a dying animal in the it background. Does. It does. I'm hoping that the mic doesn't pick it all up in the final recording, but we'll see. <laughs> uh, bad luck, Foley against Hangman Page. Nobody cares. Dude, it's telling a story. How about not that fucking dream matchup of Makabe and Yoshiyashi? Huh? <laughs> I was like, what dream matchup was he talking about? Yeah, I'm not gonna watch that match. <laughs> even uh, looking forward to tomorrow. I mean, dude, Omega Naito. That's gonna That's be, gonna be to awesome. I bet you Bush and Saber Juniors yeah. will be great too. Yeah, Juice Robinson, Tomatonga. It's good shit, man. And then the third day, so three days straight, there's gonna be shows. Yeah, you get Tanahashi and White. That's gonna be good. Mock-a-bit there's so much Suzuki good shit here. Skip. Well, I mean, the third night is not much at all. You got the Tanahashi and Jay White. It's gonna be good. But, I mean, you got Makabe, Suzuki, Okada, and Fale, Elgin, yeah, yeah. Page, and then Hashi and Evil. I mean, there's not much to look forward to. But, I mean, then you no. jump to the 19th, and you got Goto and Omega, which is the rematch for the, the semifinals from the year before. Uh, Ishii right. and Naito, which is going to be great. I bet you Juice and Bushi is going to be good. Yeah, a lot of good shit, man. Like, the whole schedule... Is out and yeah, there's a lot of good shit to look forward to. There is, and there's a lot of nights that you can easily skip. Like the main event of the 22nd show is, uh, um, what's his name, Makabe and Okada. Um, That's the main event. So really, it's it's one of those. It's not going to have any announcers for this show. I bet you. You know, some of these shows are easily skippable. Some of them have some great matches on them. Like one yeah. one main event is Okada and Hashi. Who the fuck cares? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that is fucking weird. Um, the one that happened last night here, uh, Suzuki and uh, Tanahashi, I'm interested in because they built up, you know, he hurt Tanahashi. So there's mm-hmm. a like, pretty good shit there. Yeah. And, and yeah, G1 is going to be crazy. Who it do you think wins it? Oh, man, it's so hard to say. Yeah, Especially right? when you're no looking idea. at, okay, let's fast forward to the final two nights because that's really what it all hangs down on, really, if you look at it. The final two nights. Uh, have Tanahashi against Okada as the main event, and then it also has Omega versus uh, uh, Ibushi. So, technically, it's going to come down to those four, obviously, in my opinion, because they've got those matches set up. So, you, I think the uh, the great way to go would be having Tanahashi beat Okada, putting doubt in Okada's abilities after losing the title. Tanahashi goes to the finals. And I would love to see, uh, I would imagine Omega and Ibushi is going to be some kind of weird tiebreaker deal. They'll yeah. lead to Ibushi taking on Omega at some point in time, and it might send Naito to the finals, mm. right? Because Kenny and, and Ibushi might just be headlocked there with points. And so you go to, to Tanahashi and uh, Naito in the finals, and I, I, I don't know. I wouldn't say Naito wins, but I would love to see Ibushi win. But it doesn't make sense for Ibushi to beat Omega in the finals and then face Omega again at the Wrestle Kingdom. It doesn't yeah. really make sense to me. But I, I actually, I'm going to say Tanahashi because Tanahashi said on an interview with Dave Meltzer that his goal this year is the main event. Or where he was asked, where do you see Tanahashi this year? Main event of Wrestle Kingdom after winning the G1. It was his was his prediction. I wouldn't be surprised if Tanahashi wins and goes to the G1 uh, or goes to Wrestle Kingdom to face on Kenny Omega. They've never had that match that they were supposed to have. They're supposed to have that ladder match and it never happened. Mm. So, well, this shit's going to be playing out over the next month. The finals, August 12th, Budokan Hall. Yes, and the A block what, now? and B the block. 15th? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The A block and B block winners, Rey Mysterio, and also. Sengoku Enbu, a promotional tie-in wrestler named after the card game that's sponsoring the tournament, will be in action. <laughs> Likely played by a member of the New Japan roster. So uh, that should be fucking fun. I think that shit's fucking funny. I, I like they have like, like Tiger uh, Mask W and shit. Yeah, Vince is like what? Well, I don't know what the name was. Dark Tiger Mask, whatever. The oh, fuck. Tiger Mask, Tiger Mask Dark or Black or something. You mean yeah. where Eddie Guerrero was was the guy? You mean? I'm talking about like recently, what was it, where ACH was playing? Oh, yes. Like the dark version of the guy Ibushi was playing. Like you have Ibushi and you're like, I'm dressed up like a fucking, I don't even know what the hell. <laughs> Tiger Mask. Tiger Mask. Well, that was a TV show that came out too, Tiger Mask W. Yeah. Why can't we get a Voltron wrestler? That'd be the shit. It would be. I would like to see the Power Rangers. 
Power Rangers. Yeah, man, get me the Green Ranger. <laughs> oh, man. Comes in with his flute, <laughs> plays his flute, and a fucking robotic dinosaur comes in and just eats fucking <laughs> one of the Japanese wrestlers. Be fucking That's got to be a DQ at least. <laughs> fucking. Can't have fucking robotic fucking dinosaurs coming in. That's a bullshit. Even Red Shoes would call that a DQ. Yeah, no shit, right? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. He might not. Red shoes would might just allow it. <laughs> oh, fuck, you know, he, he was summoned by a flute, so he's got to be an extension of fucking the Green Ranger, I guess. Yeah. Well, you know, he he fucking let anything go, Red Shoes. He don't give a shit. Oh, yeah, you know, he, no shit's to be given. But, I mean, whatever. Yeah. So there you go, man. That was a fucking quick recap of the week, huh? That was. Well, I mean, it's it, it was a more concise, re, you know, just just tight, tight. A good hour and 40 minutes. 45. Yeah. Tight like your mom's pussy before she had you. Ooh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think, yeah, let's do it, man. Um, it, yeah, what's coming up in the fucking Federation? Oh, you know, the same thing that I've been hyping up for like the last three weeks. Great American Bash 1991. Uh, oh, yeah. I apologize for everything. Uh, I've had, I've moved one week, started a new job in the next week, and I just have been flat out. So uh, we will get a chance to record this weekend, and uh, hopefully you guys enjoy it. Hopefully you guys haven't all went away uh, because of this hiatus <laughs> that we've been on, but fuck it. If you if you don't yeah. listen, you don't listen, man. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Quite a bitch. You know, I always see uh, La Rocca promoting his new movies, and then he always closes, and I feel like, see you or not, I don't care. <laughs> 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 yeah. yeah. I just don't uh, don't really care. <laughs> uh, pay-per-view take two. I don't know. We were, it's funny. We have our own bullshit. We were talking, like, we're going to go back and do the bash from 91. And because there's a show that we tried to record like twice and we had recording problems with way back in the day. So we're like, we're going back and we're like, okay, we're not going back. <laughs> so uh, uh, did, did your poll end? Cause what, what was the poll you guys had up for your choices? Poll did end. Um, Chris Savage, the infamous one himself was kind enough to hit the, the money mark tier to pick the next episode of pay-per-view take two, but he instead let the masses pick. So he oh. picked four shows and let the, let the, the fucking SCL nation decide. And they decided on Royal rumble 2006 offhand. I have no idea what the show is. So cause I, I guess voted, we'll see. I voted too. And I have no idea what happens in Royal. Rumble. Is that the one where John Cena and Batista both eliminate each other? I have no idea. Oh God, <laughs> probably. Um, and dude, it was funny because Over the Edge was on there. 99, yeah. like the, sh- the show where Owen dies, and it got like no votes. I was like, oh, thank God. <laughs> God for that. Yeah, that what, the fu- horrible. what the fuck are we supposed to do? So, oh, am I rebooking? Uh, we're going to rebook it so Owen doesn't die. <laughs> you know, like, what the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck am I supposed um, to do with that? Oh, that's the one where I believe Mysterio wins the, the Royal Rumble. Well, thanks for fucking spoiling it, dude. <laughs> huh? You didn't even say spoiler alert first. <laughs> oh, I haven't got around to that one yet. So, yeah, that's coming up on the Suplex City Limits channel as well. Uh, ringside of the gyms, eh, you know. It is kind of... There will be I've... more SCL Extra coming very soon. Oh, yeah, yeah. There you go. It's a long way to return whether you guys want it or not. It's coming. So if after listening to the Federation and all the shows on Suplex City Limits Network, you're looking for more podcasts, may we suggest our friends at the Wrestling Soup Podcast? Mm-hmm. Uh, what else? We got The Strap, Sap Pod, Shooting the Shiznit. Yep. In Human Experience. Yeah, In Human Experience. Um, so what's a Smack It Down, a boy over there. Um, yeah. Check out all those shows. And I think uh, we'll do our Twitter shout outs here. Retweet a pinned episode. See, here now would be a time if you had that song still. Boom, <laughs> maybe. You have no idea what I'm trying to do right now. Oh, I'm, I'm way ahead of you. Or not oh, way God. ahead of you. I'm close. <laughs> <laughs> That's what she said. Uh, so you can retweet the pinned episode on our Twitter at Suplex City Limit. Get yourself a shout out. Help spread the word. Help spread the disease that is Suplex City Limits. 
Oh, oh my. <laughs> yeah, baby, yeah. Shout out Fathead Turtle, the infamous Chris Savage, Eric Turner, Johnny Utah, Badass Bobby Anthem, Adam Sharpies, Sharples, not Sharpies, So Divine, Lance Levine, Big Papa Totoro, Mr. Klondike Bill, Dom Homie, our boy Burbs will be back next week. Uh, Tony Vasquez. Yeah, no shit. Uh, Venus Lebowski. <laughs> JC Sterling. Leo. Gabrielle Ruiz. J. Dune. Jared. Uh, Jumpin' Jeremy Foltz. Shooting the Shiznit. Lee Unwin. Christian and Damon's Amazing Nerd Show. Well Kept and Unclean. Scotty from the Sad Pod. Pro Wrestling Blab. B Swing 22. Chuck Tavin. EMZT Podcast and Productions. Ardent Wrestling. Scott Trilgram. Grammars, AC Patty, Balls Deep 2019, J1976, Bobby fucking Blades, and of course, Caleb Morganfield. We thank you all very much. 